Okay, Acts chapter number 1. Acts chapter number 1. At uh, basahin natin ito, no? So what we're looking at tonight are the early churches of the New Testament. Yung mga, yung mga churches na hindi karaniwang binabanggit ng mga uh, Bible teachers, <laughs> Bible commentaries, kasi nga, galing sila sa ibang tradisyon, hindi sila biblical, okay? So, sa kanila, uh, sa evangelical, no, hindi sa biblical, pati na rin sa fundamental, paminsan, ang kanilang uh, doctrine ay, ang church ay nagsimula sa Acts chapter number 2, okay? Pero mali ho yun. Sa Biblia, ang church nagsimula pa yan, Matthew chapter 4, <laughs> sa Galilee. Pero ngayon, Acts chapter number 1 tayo. Tingnan natin kung ano ang nangyari sa church. The Tribals sa Acts chapter number 1. And let's look at verse number uh, 12. Acts chapter 1 verse number 12. And the Bible says this, they return, Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. So basically, they just saw the Lord Jesus Christ depart. He had given them a commission. We all know, if you've been studying with us, alam mo na kung ano ang Great Commission. You know what the Great Commission is. And you should know that. It's making disciples of all nations. God wants us to teach all nations and make them disciples. <clears throat> and uh, uh, then... Uh, verse number 13, And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Okay, so the church is in the upper room. And uh, what were they doing there? They were going to pray. Okay, so uh, where abode Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, these all continued with one accord in prayer. They were united in prayer. And so one of the things that the church at Jerusalem, let me, uh, let me give you a map para alam natin, no? Oh, so try this here. <laughs> okay. There we go. So what's this? This is this is the map. Let me give you a. You gotta draw Jerusalem. There's a lake, Lake Hulda here, and then it goes into Lake of Galilee here, and this goes into the Dead Sea, over here. <clears throat> so, kind of you kind of know this is the Mediterranean Sea. I uh, put waves. I like waves. And this is Israel. So Jerusalem is located right here, kind of like right here, Jerusalem. And this is the, the church that functioned in the upper room. They were started in Galilee. Galilee would be over here. And then they traveled in circuit coming over here and over here during the ministry of Christ. Uh, they were a mobile church. They were moving around. And they were involved in ministry work as uh, Jesus was preaching and teaching. So anyway, you have uh, the upper room now in Acts chapter number 1. And they're in uh, Jerusalem. <clears throat> so, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer. They were united in prayer. And so, uh, why do we have prayer meetings? Why do we have uh, a Wednesday night prayer meetings? Well, one of the reasons why is because we need to be united together in prayer. Prayer is a very, very important aspect of the Christian life. It's not just private, personal prayer, like Matthew chapter 6 is talking about. 
when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and thy Father which seeth thee in secrets, very thy, thee, and thou. It's really you, singular. This one is ye, plural. This is a corporate. So if, if private personal prayer is important, so is corporate prayer important as well. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> let's look at um, verse number uh, 14 again. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. So this church is composed of baptized disciples who are visible, organized, assembled, and assembled with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. This would be the physical children of Mary, uh, his brethren. And we know from the Bible he had several brethren and he had several sisters as well. You know, he was in a big Jewish family. Jesus uh, was born. Uh, his physical body was born that way. And so uh, he had half-brothers and half-sisters and his family here, of course, <clears throat> is uh, mentioned as being members of that church in Jerusalem. Uh, and look at verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Now notice what they were called. They were called the disciples. So is the church is made up, composed of baptized disciples, you see. They were disciples. Now, it didn't say church. It said the disciples. But the implication is that they were members of this church. <clears throat> Let's read on. And said, the number of names together were about 120. Did they keep a record of names and number? Yes, they did. How many members were in this church uh, in the upper room? How many? 120. So is this a local, visible, organized assembly of baptized disciples? Yes. So this is a church. Now they're called the disciples. They weren't called, you know, a name of a church. That, but the Bible assumes and presumes and actually infers that these were baptized disciples. So apparently they were baptized during the ministry of Jesus Christ. So let me ask you a question. Did Jesus Christ baptize disciples? Yes. Where do we find that? John chapter number four. Look at John chapter four. John chapter four. Verse number 1 and 2, verse number 1 and 2. John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Who did he baptize? Disciples. So again, a church is an organized assembly of baptized disciples. Jesus baptized nobody else except for disciples. And a disciple is a follower of the Lord. They repented of their sin. They trusted in the Lord as their Messiah and Savior. And uh, they, they, uh, were, they decided to get identified with him through baptism. That's what baptism does. It identifies you with Jesus. And you're saying your old life is buried and now you're going to walk in newness of life. You're going to picture the truth of your salvation. So baptism is also a picture of salvation. It is not salvation. It is a picture of salvation. It's kind of like a symbol. Okay, it's not the reality. The reality is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's when you were born again. That's when you were associated, identified, linked with Jesus Christ. But through baptism, you're letting everybody know, I am no longer interested in my former life. I am now going to follow Jesus. <laughs> and so the first step of obedience is baptism. And so, <clears throat> so we find the scriptural pattern that disciples are baptized. Uh, look at John chapter 3, verse number 22. 
John chapter 3, verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples in the land of Judea. Oh, and there he tarried with them and baptized. So what was Jesus doing? He was building his church. He was edifying the church. It was there already. The church was there. What You don't baptize somebody and... And it's like you don't you just baptize them and that's it. They're they're just bad. No, you baptize them to identify them, to place them somewhere. <laughs> so where did Jesus baptize these believers, these disciples? He baptized them and added them to his church. You see? That's the pattern in the New Testament. So was the church around before Pentecost? Yes. Did they keep a, a record of names and number? Yes, they had a membership role. They had names. They knew everybody. <laughs> they assembled. <laughs> and uh, on and on. Uh, look at Luke chapter number 12, verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. We're looking at the first church. Okay, the church that was established at Galilee and then roved around, moved around, and then the the we're in the upper room in Jerusalem. We can call it the church at Jerusalem. That's fine. Uh, but look at Luke chapter number 12 and verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. By the way, kung meron kayong tanong, habang nag-aaral tayo, pwede magtanong. Ilagay niyo na lang dyan sa comment section natin o di kaya alagay niyo sa messenger. Uh, magtanong kayo pwede. Okay, habang nag-aaral tayo. But uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 32. Luke 12 verse 32. Fear not little flock. So what is the flock of God? Remember what Acts chapter 20, 28 says? Feed the flock of God which he hath made you overseers. So what is this little flock? Oh, huh. this is the church. The New Testament visible organized assembly of baptized disciples. Okay, uh, they celebrated the Lord's Supper. Look at Matthew chapter twenty-six. So this church prayed. This church had a membership roster. This church is called the little flock. The disciples. They were called the disciples. The little flock. This church observed the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Matthew chapter 26. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. And verse, uh, let's see here. Matthew 26, verse number 26. Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And so the disciples, and this is the people who are organized and assembled and baptized and added to the church. Did the Lord uh, observe the Lord's Supper with outsiders? No, he didn't. In fact, uh, In fact, this was a private meeting between Christ and his church. And that's why when we have Lord's Supper, uh, the only ones who are invited to Lord's Supper is the church. Okay, if you're not, if you're a disciple, that's good. Uh, but if you're not a baptized disciple, that's not, you're not welcome to the Lord's Supper. Why? Because this is for baptized disciples, you see. This is the practice of our Lord. <clears throat> uh, they sang a hymn. They sang as a church. Look at Matthew 26, verse number 30. Matthew chapter 26, verse number 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into Mount of Olives. So did they have congregational singing? Yes, they had congregational singing. That's why we sing in the church. Uh, we worship the Lord. We thank the Lord. We edify one another with godly music. 
And uh, you see, this is the pattern we find that Jesus did. This is Jesus singing hymns in the midst of his church. And so, uh, is this a church? Yes, it is. <clears throat> they had church discipline. Look at Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Jesus taught the church to function and have church discipline. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 15. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more members of the church, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. So was the church there so you could tell it to the church? Yes. Okay. So the church at Jerusalem is the first church. And they had, they were called the little flock. They had the Lord's Supper. They sang a hymn. They had a membership role, a roster. Uh, they, had, um, they had a treasurer. They even had money and treasurer. <laughs> Look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Why people teach the church didn't begin until Pentecost is beyond Scripture. <laughs> it makes no sense when you look at the Bible and you see that the Bible teaches us they were there. They were functioning already as a church. John chapter 13, verse 29. John 13, verse 29. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need uh, of against <clears throat> the feast. So the bag, <laughs> that's the, the money bag. That's the treasurer. So Judas wasn't just a bishop. He was also the treasurer. <laughs> he, uh, you know, so Judas had a lot of functioning role in this church. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway... But uh, this was the first church. And uh, let's go back to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter number 1. And uh, this church had a business meeting. They had to take care of replacing Judas. So they replaced Judas. Uh, make sure you're looking at the messenger for any questions or anything like that. You may have any thought I don't. If uh, anybody has a comment or anything, that's fine. All right. Uh, and again, kung may tanong, please pakilagay na lang sa comment section, and then we'll try to answer that as we study the first church. Now, <clears throat> think among Acts chapter one, verse sixteen. Acts chapter number one, verse sixteen. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. And so now he's in, Peter is saying we need to replace Judas. This is scriptural. He fulfilled the scriptures. And uh, now we have to do our part and replace him. So they had a church business meeting, a matter in the church that they had to discuss as a church. They had a vote. Um, this is, again, the rudimentary elements of a New Testament biblical church. They were visible. They were uh, organized. They were assembled, uh, an assembly of baptized disciples. They fit the pattern of the New Testament church. <clears throat> and so uh, they basically voted in Matthias to be the uh, replacement for Judas and uh, look over in verse number 26. And they gave forth their lots. Okay? Yung ibig sabihin ng lots dito ay nagvote sila. They, they uh, elected Matthias to be the replacement for Judas. And uh, that was sealed and done by, uh, and acceptable by, uh, uh, by, the, by, the, by God. And he received that decision of the church. <clears throat> now, um, this church preached and proclaimed Jesus Christ. They prayed, they preached and proclaimed Christ. And so uh, this is why we preach the gospel. 
And we believe in evangelism. We believe in discipleship. We believe in the things that they practice. That's what we do. Uh, we will have a, a membership roster. We'll have a membership role. We're interested in baptizing disciples. Disciples who want to continue with us, want to continue building, establishing a New Testament biblical church in Tuktukan. Uh, we want those disciples, and we're, we're working with people, uh, and some are young Christians, and some are older Christians, but no matter what, uh, if they want to continue growing, they can be added to the church, and, uh, and we will establish that work there, and then that church will establish other churches. <clears throat> now, uh, look at Acts chapter number 8, Acts chapter 8. And verse number 14, Acts chapter 8, verse number 14, something transpired during the ministry of uh, a church planter, a deacon, and a preacher evangelist named Philip. God used Philip to plant a church in Samaria. Look at Acts chapter 14, or I'm sorry, Acts chapter 8, verse 14. Acts chapter 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem, the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard, verse 14, that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, and whom, who when they were calmed down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So here's the thing, Samaria is north of Jerusalem. Here's Samaria. So they called for uh, Peter and John to establish that work because the Holy Spirit hasn't authenticated them yet. But they were saved, they received the word of God, they were baptized, and then they were authenticated. So this church planted the church in Samaria. You see? By the way, Jerusalem is in the region of uh, Judea. Samaria is in this region of Samaria. The city is named after the region, so don't be confused. Okay? Nasa probinsya ng Samaria ang lungsod ng Samaria. Nasa probinsya ng Judea, ang lungsod ng Jerusalem. So this is Judea, this is Samaria, this is Galilee. So anyway, I want to give you this geography so that you can see where the churches are going to be at as we look at the scriptures here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, verse 17, Acts chapter 8, verse 17, Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So, did the Jerusalem church receive the Holy Ghost? Acts chapter 2, they did. Did the church in Samaria receive the Holy Ghost? Acts chapter um, 8, they did. Okay? So, uh, the Holy Spirit authenticates, always authenticates. The Holy Spirit authenticated the tabernacle in Moses' time. The Holy Spirit authenticated the temple in Solomon's time. When Jesus Christ came down and was baptized by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit authenticated Jesus, the Messiah. And now that Jesus is tra uh, has transitioned and is given the, the responsibility to the church and the churches, the Holy Spirit authenticated the Jerusalem church first, which are Jews, then the Samaritans, which are half Jews, and then later the Holy Spirit will authenticate uh, the Gentile church uh, in Acts chapter 10. Anyway, but uh, let's look at Acts chapter 9, verse 32. Acts chapter 9, verse 32. Look over here in Acts chapter 9, verse 32. And it came to pass, as Peter passed through all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. The saints which dwelt at Lydda. Where is Lydda? Oh, it's right here. Lydda. 
north of Jerusalem, but it says he came down. Why did it say he came down? Because Jerusalem is in a mountain. And so you come down from a mountain, even though you're going north. That's confusing. But Lydda, so he's right here in Lydda. And he found saints in Lydda. Do you think they are uh, disciples? I think so. I think the Bible assumes that. Look at Acts chapter 9, again, verse uh, 33. Acts chapter 9, verse 33. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, make thy bed. And he arose immediately. So Peter healed uh, Aeneas. And all, look at how the Bible says it, all that dwelt in Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. So there was a revival in Lydda and, these, and Saron, and then probably next, next door to Lydda, a smaller town. But these people returned to the Lord. They got saved and uh, baptized and established a work in Lydda. Look at verse 36. Now therefore, now, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. Oh, wait a minute. Another disciple. But this time it's at uh, Joppa. Where is Joppa? Joppa is right here. Coastal city, Joppa. So you see, <clears throat> there are disciples there. The assumption there is that they are saved, baptized, <laughs> disciples, organized, and visibly uh, in church. <laughs> so let, look here, verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deed, which she did. So she was involved in helping the poor. You see, is it a good thing for our church to help the poor? Well, God recognized Tabitha for helping the poor, and she's a disciple, a member of the church, no doubt, at Joppa. <clears throat> and uh, it came to pass in those days, verse 37, that she was sick and died, and whom when they washed, they had washed, uh, they laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, they're right next to each other, Lydda was nigh to Joppa, uh, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. The disciples. Who are these disciples? The church members of the church at Joppa heard that Peter was in Lydda. So what did they do? Uh, the disciples heard that Peter was there. They sent him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So they knew that the Apostle Peter healed Ananias. Uh, maybe they could resurrect Tabitha. Uh, look at verse 39. Then Peter arose and went with them. And he, when he was come, they brought him unto the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints, that's the same term as what we saw in Acts chapter 1 about the church in Jerusalem. So is there a church in Joppa? Yes. <clears throat> and she opened her eyes, and, 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 and okay. the saints and widows presented her alive. Verse 42. And it was known throughout all Joppa that many believed in the Lord. So the evangelistic revival continued under the ministry of Peter. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. So uh, Simon obviously had a big house and he, uh, he uh, accommodated Peter. And Peter was chilling. He was maxing and relaxing. At Simon, and look at the where Joppa is a coastal town, so I guarantee you there was a nice beachfront home. 
and there was a lot of fresh air and salt water and all that enjoyable amenities at Simon the Tanner's house. Peter was having a wonderful time. But look at verse number 10. Look at uh, chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. This is not a rock band. This is not a musical band. Okay, this is talking about an army. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cornel Cornelius is a captain, a general in an army, uh, a, um, uh, a Gentile army. And he was in... Caesarea, the Bible says. Ces there's two Caesareas in, in, the, in the Bible geography. This is the Caesarea he's talking about right here, Caesarea. Caesarea Maritima. The other Caesarea is over here. This is the Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's over here. That's this Caesarea. But Cornelius is in Caesarea, the coastal Caesarea. <clears throat> so what happened? Peter witnessed to him about the Lord. His family got saved. What did they do? They got baptized. So what was planted in Caesarea? A church, an assembly of baptized disciples. And what had happened? Did the Holy Spirit come down to them? Yes, it did. The Holy Spirit came down. <clears throat> Look at this. Uh, Look at verse 44, Acts chapter 10, verse 44. And again, the Holy Spirit coming down authenticates. Now, the Jews don't need any more authentic the Jewish church, churches in the Jewish church area doesn't need authentication anymore. That happened in Jerusalem. The Samaritan, the half-Jews, needed authenticated. That happened in Acts chapter 8. But in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, the Spirit came down for the Gentile churches and authenticated the, the church in uh, Caesarea. So, does the Holy Spirit need to come down now and authenticate churches? No more. It doesn't happen anymore. Why? Because it happened already in Jerusalem for the Jewish people. It happened in Samaria for the half-Jewish and half-Gentile people. And then it happened in Acts chapter 10 in, at uh, Caesarea for all the Gentile people. So the Holy Spirit's authentication is over, finished. So there is no more. You can't pray, you know, send the Spirit and... and Help us to have another Pentecost, you know. That's up to the Lord if he wants to bless that way. But as far as biblical pattern, that is a dispensational event that took place. God authenticating his church to the Jews, to the half-Jews, and to the Gentiles. The progression there. Acts chapter number 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, that's the Gentiles, which believed were astonished, and many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost doesn't get poured out anymore. You're not going to read about another pouring. He already got poured in Jerusalem, got poured in Samaria, got poured in uh, Caesarea. And those are your representation. Jews, half-Jews, half Gentiles, and then full Gentiles, you see. So that is once and done event, uh, the, the pouring of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> authenticating the church there. So there was a church in Caesarea, Peter and Cornelius, and Peter tarried there uh, for many days. <clears throat> Let's look at verse number 47. Verse number 47, Acts chapter 10, verse 47. Can any man forbid water that there sh these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And so 
Uh, it was during this time that James is pastoring the church at Jerusalem and Peter is involved in church planting. And so you see uh, the church is functioning here. So there's a church in Jerusalem. There's a church in Samaria. There's a church in Lydda. There's a church in Joppa. There's a church in uh, Caesarea. <clears throat> look over in uh, look over in Acts chapter nine. Acts chapter nine. That's why when you read Acts chapter nine, verse thirty-one, Acts thirty-one, the King James Bible says churches. The New Translation says church. One universal, mystical, invisible, made-up body. That's not biblical. The critical text and the modern translation change what the King James Bible and the, uh, the received text teaches us. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then had the churches, not the church, the churches rest throughout all Judea, and Galilee and Samaria. So there were churches already in Judea, in Samaria, and in Galilee. Where did these churches come from? What it is, is that when the church at Jerusalem was persecuted, well, when the church at Jerusalem had Pentecost, there were, there were strangers from all over the world that gathered in Jerusalem. They got saved, baptized, added to the church. And when they went back home, they planted churches. They planted churches everywhere. These are not the universal mystical church. The King James has it right in verse 31. Then had the churches rest. The modern translation would say, then the church the church had rest, the church of Judea, Samaria, and Galilee, one church, one mystical church, not so, not in a biblical uh, teaching here, you see. It's not one church, it's many churches, all several churches, different kinds of churches here <clears throat> that we see in the Bible. <clears throat> all right, well, that's all the time we have. For tonight, at least we saw uh, there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six. There may be more that were identified um, uh, identified here in, in the scriptures. So, uh, so much for the one church, you know, that one mystical, invisible church that nobody could see and nobody knows. And, the Spirit baptizes them into the mystical body. Look, the, the, I'm going to have to show you from the Bible that the Holy Spirit never baptizes anybody. This, this baptism with the Spirit or baptism of the Spirit, what is it? Oh, well, we're going to have to look at that some other time. But uh, I'm more interested in looking at the churches. No, so what did we learn about the churches? Well, they, they had prayer. They had preaching. They had a membership roster. They had discipline. They sang song. They had the Lord's Supper. They had officers like a bishop and a treasurer. You see, it's an organized, visible, organized assembly of baptized disciples. That is a biblical church. And we'll look at some more. There's about 30, I think 30. I think there's about 30 churches uh, in the New Testament. We're going to go through them. So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless that. Well, on question, I don't see any questions. So you have any questions there? No, well, on questions, no? Okay. Mabait kayo mga nanunood. Mabigat na masyado yung English, pero at least nanunood kayo. Salamat. Mas easy ako mag-English na lang ako kesa mag-Tagalog. Malito ako, malilito rin kayo. All right? But anyway. Uh, thank you for listening. <clears throat> Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the truths we find in Scripture concerning the churches and how important every church is to you and how, uh, what a pattern, an example church is the Jerusalem church and other churches that are loving and faithful and preaching and proclaiming and disciplined uh, to follow and obey you and to uh, commit to 
uh, your ordinance, uh, ordinances, Lord, and uh, your mandate. So I pray you would strengthen us and bless us. I pray you would establish a work in Tuktukan that would be a biblical church that will reach into other areas, Lord, and plant other churches as well that will love you and live for you. We ask you a blessing upon us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.